invention, and it went on. And Mike Wink will tell you that at one time, there were many thousands of these things made. You know, they started 1823 when he invented them. Most of these uh, examples date from, like, the clock, probably 1830, because of the type of silk suspension mechanism that the clock is. Then all the way up till you'll find American patents, like 1880, improvements in Doberiner's lamp. You know, and you wonder, why was Doberiner still having improvements in his lamp? Well, because invention and communication, people, you know, doing this, you know, similar and a better idea, the inventive thing that makes lighter so ex exciting to me that we see. And then art, the ability to be able to come up with different figural things. This one I love because when, when it lights, her hat would catch on fire. <laughs> and now she's sitting here with her hat <laughs> ablaze. Wow, that's right. A comedy, you know, and, uh, and, and ingenuity, and, and, and then fineness, you know, and cast silver and make things, you know, higher end and vermeil, you know, with the, with the plating. And all kinds of characters. You look through, I remember when I went to um, Belgium, and uh, I'm trying to remember the collector. Who's the collector in Belgium? Um, Had done where? No, 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 it's Belgium, no, Holland. Um, Dussart, Leo Dussart. He had one, a beautiful uh, Dobreiner with a big cannon on it, and you turn one of the cannon wheels and the Dobreiner would light. There were so many different styles. I have about 20 lamps in my collection. I brought the ones I thought, you know, kind of spoke to, you know, what it is I like about the Dobreiner lamps. They all actually spring up from this device here, and this is the Voltus lamp, and this one was owned by Alessandro Volta, was demonstrated for Napoleon, um, and this is a device that was around, this one dates about 1785, 1790. It has the same idea for producing hydrogen, but it used electric spark, and uh, Volta had discovered that uh, hydrogen gas could be ignited by a spark, and so he uh, uh, created the electrophorus. He's also known for inventing the battery or the pile, and uh, and he became famous um, at Volk. first. Uh, hmm? Volk, yeah. That's Volk. That's right. Right. And you yeah. know there was another guy named Galvani, and Galvani and Volta they sort of had this ongoing debate about who understood electricity because they were making electrical charges, static electricity, and they're making frogs' legs jump, and there became this bioelectrical thing that people were all very interested in that you could make dead bodies jump with touching them with these sparks. They had some guy dead there and they, they're wondering, can they bring people back to life? They were playing with all this stuff as scientific guides. And it swept the world, you know, during the Age of Enlightenment, 1770 to 1810. This was a big subject. And so Alessandro Volta got into this debate. Is the electricity inside the body or is it outside the body? They argued back and forth. Ultimately, uh, Volta won. He was the guy that had the right idea. And it was devices like this that took him around. This device here has an electrical force in its base. Here. I'll bring it out so you can all see it. But it's a rosin plate. And you would take a cat's fur and you'd rub this all like this and get it all charged up and then drop this plate down and that charge would now go into that metal. And then you could take it and put it back into the lamp. like this, being careful not to accidentally discharge it, and you get it like that. So now you've got the uh, electrical charge. Next part is, is getting the gas. So this one, because he wanted a, po a portable lamp that he could take around, he had it made so he could keep his acid like this, and he had another bottle that would have been what he... He would just put a little bit of acid in this and take the top off and put it back in here and then he would put this down over the top and he would open the valve and he would wait till he smelled hydrogen. Hydrogen has a really pungent odor, you can smell it, you'll smell it on a car battery that's overcharging. And, uh, and he'd wait till he smelled the hydrogen because you don't want any oxygen in this vessel when you go to use it. If you've got oxygen in there, Oof. you have a grenade. Yep. And that's why they're all gone. That's why these devices are non-existent today. Someone left oxygen in the device. <laughs> and you don't do that. And so, all charged up, filled with hydrogen, and a crowd of people. And he would have everybody all hold hands, 
And uh, then he would reach down and he'd say, okay, I'm going to turn the device on, got contact. And then he would have one person touch this knob, and everybody hold hands, probably pick the cutest girl in the room, and bring her over and say, okay, now you touch this knob. And the moment that happened, everybody gets a hell of an electrical <laughs> jolt, and the lamp would light. And if the valve opened, there'd be hydrogen gas coming out. And the moment everybody got shocked, the spark would jump across here, and everybody would uh, see the light. And how much do they have to pay to see this? You know, it'd be interesting. There's actually a, uh, a whole written account of this that I have. I didn't bring it, but in about uh, 1801, uh, when the device had been shown around a while, and the story about it having happened, they didn't record it at the time, but it had to do with uh, Napoleon uh, wanting to see if there could be a weapon design. And they lined up a thousand soldiers around the Palais Royal in Paris. <laughs> By now, Guy Lussac and uh, Lavoisier and these other famous scientists were building big, big generators, giant glass cylinders and, and discs <laughs> that are spinning, and they're making giant charges. And he almost killed a thousand soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> I went them all hold hands. <laughs> How did you acquire that, Tom? I'm sorry? How did you acquire that? A friend of mine, uh, Rick, uh, uh, let's see, you're testing my memory. A um, friend of mine who deals in scientific instruments knew I loved these old lighters, and I hadn't seen him in maybe 10 years. And one day he calls me up and he goes, Tom, I have a Voltas lamp for you. And so uh, I went down, and sure enough, that's what he had. And, I didn't yeah. even argue. I, I gave him five thousand bucks, yeah. and I, you know, and I thought I stole it. Yeah.